Hey, I got a question for you. How old are your feet? No, seriously. How old you are, apply that number to your foot, and there you go. How old is your foot? Because it's not just a number. This is going to tell you how many decades you've been deconditioning your feet. I didn't mean to, no! But don't worry. Cool thing is about having something deconditioned is obviously there was an opportunity of conditioning. So if you can detrain your feet, you can train your feet back to ability. I wanna show you a mobility tool that can also be used as a strength training tool that is one of my absolute favorites and it's something that I have around my house and I use it daily. It's what I call the bird perch. Taking a simple hand towel from the bathroom, take that towel and fold it into thirds. Once folded into thirds, fold it in half. Taking the top portion of the towel and rolling it up, securing it with two rubber bands, you've now made your very own bird perch for your feet. The bird perch can be used in multiple ways, but what I'm going to demonstrate for you is the basics. Bringing your foot up against the bird perch, you're going to have your knuckles touch the floor and your toes point up. This can be done one of two ways. Either A, holding here and simply sliding the knees forward and back, to play with the mobility of extension within the toes of the foot. If it's painful, knock it off. If it's not painful, and you think that you can add a little more mobility, you're now starting to explore where you are with range of motion in the ankle joint, in addition to the flexibility and mobility of the front of the foot through the toes. Next, you'll push your foot forward, pressing your knuckle over onto the bird perch. Rocking forward, your knee always goes in alignment over the toes as you rock forward and back. Play not only with the mobility of the foot, but the mobility of the ankle joint. Pushing your foot forward, allowing your heel to stay on the floor, the front of the foot wraps over the bird perch as you continue to rock. Pushing forward one more time, your goal is to keep the heel on the floor as the rest of the foot rocks over. From here, we're gonna add just a little more mobility. It's not just about the entire foot, but we're also working with mobility because if we were to be out in nature, we're not gonna step on everything being even. So we can come into a side step going with the exact same action with knee going straight over toes as I rock forward and back three to five times. I can play with this from a different stepped position. Again, knee goes straight over the toes three to five times. Wherever you want to perch the foot, you can get spicy and go into very slow isolated knee circles as the foot tries to keep close to the floor. When done, bring the foot up and roll three to five times, ending with a gentle shake. Obviously, you'll apply this to the other foot, but take your time with it, and here's a key reminder. When something is new, when something is novel to the brain and it hasn't experienced it, it might seemingly be threatening, meaning the brain is gonna tell you, I don't know, I don't think this is gonna be right for me, so can you stop? Pain is designed to change your behavior and nothing is more painful than a foot cramp. So if you get a cramp in the foot, all it means is that the movement is novel and the brain of the nervous system said, maybe this is too much. Don't put so much pressure on. Don't have the knees drive over the toes. Instead, lean back a little bit while you're gently applying pressure. The greater the load, the greater the threat, potentially. Learn your nervous system, and with that said, if you've not yet learned how to read your nervous system, check out my little video here as this goes over how you can understand what your brain is trying to tell you and so many of us are ignoring. Great movement, keep trying, keep investing. Ta-ta!